project one, we created just this very basic uh, composition. So let's expand on this and make this a little more detailed. So let's go to our drawing tools and select the rectangle. And this is just a very simple shape. And we're going to take it and draw a rectangle roughly spaced in or around evenly from each edge or so, maybe about a quarter of an inch visually. It doesn't have to be precise. And then let's center this like we did the filigree. I right click, selecting center both. And then we're going to use the carve region tool. Carve region is uh, what you use to give any element you've put on the board a depth. So if you click that, it'll automatically turn that rectangle into a recessed carve area. And by default, it's going to always be a quarter of an inch deep. So let's snap that back. Okay, so now we've got these patterns that are raised up off of the board or the, the background rather than it recessed into the surface. So this is one of the first questions a lot of new customers ask is how do I get the carvings to be raised off of the board and not carved into the surface? And this is how you do it. You actually have to remove all of that background element. So this is step one. We've already created something pretty nice looking, but it's a little boring. All of this background is pretty flat and uninteresting. So let's go ahead and select that again. And you know if you have something selected because it'll have that white shape around it. So if you're moving from one object to another, you can know which one you have selected by seeing where that white rectangle is. There's another trick to knowing what you have selected or to selecting those objects, and that is the carving list. So you you go to the view menu, scroll down to carving list at the very bottom, and that will open up this list of everything that's on the board. So it gives you quick easy access to those elements, uh, especially when you get into complex designs that have multiple multiple patterns on them. It's much easier to select them from this list than trying to click in between a whole jumble of patterns and trying to pick uh, certain elements out. So with the rectangle selected, let's use the tool select texture and let's add some interest to this background. So there's many uh, default textures in here and you can alter them a little bit through uh, changing the interval. So the interval is, is what the spacing is in between each one of those uh, the repeating pattern here so about one inch is, is where I think all of them default to we can change that to whatever interval we want and then it'll fill that entire background with that shape so that gives it some visual interest but maybe a little too much interest it's so busy it's really detracting from the patterns that we have here and the composition that we've created. So what we should do is select that and up here where we have the depth selection in the input toolbar, remember we have this height tool. And height is where we can make things taller or shallower within the depth that we have selected. So let's try to shallow this to make this background a little more subtle and not so harsh. Let's take it all the way down to 30 and see what that looks like. And that's quite a bit better. Now it's a, uh, a more subtle background element rather than such a, a harsh uh, foreground element that's competing with our, our main pieces on here. We could probably even take it down further. Let's try 20 and look what it looks like. And this is also an important lesson in designing in Project Designer you want to try different things and visually look at what you are getting so that you can make decisions based on what it looks like. And that's the beauty of the CarveRite software, the WYSIWYG quality of this software. It gives you the ability to see 
what it's going to carve right there on the screen. Okay, so now we've got a, a, a very nice, visually interesting piece. Okay, we're going to do some optimization to this project here. The first thing we're going to do is select everything on the board and we're going to apply the bit optimization tool. So bit optimization, as you can see from these pictures here, bit optimization will restrict how far down the actual tip of the bit will go into the carving. And a lot of this is, is because the graphics that you're dealing with can have very, very fine details that will be finer than the tip of the bit that you're carving on. So if this nook right here is to be carved exactly as the information in the, the graphics we give it, it will try to go all the way down to the bottom layer of, of that nook to carve that bottom edge. And as a result, it'll end up widening this area out because it's gonna to have to carve away some of the top surface in order to get to that bottom pixel. So in order to avoid it obliterating top edge details, chasing after single pixels down here at the bottom edges of things, we use that bit optimization tool, which then tells the bit just go down as far as you can without removing any top layer details. So it gives us a much cleaner, finer detailed uh, top surface carving because we don't have to get the bottom edge details on, on every single thing. So I use bit optimization on every carving I do almost always at the, the best quality. That's the first step in optimizing your projects. The second step is to take a look at your project here and make some decisions about how your bit is going to interact with the shapes there. So this region that we carved here in the background has got this straight up and down edges here. But the problem with that is that we're going to be using our standard carving bit which actually is tapered. So a tapered bit trying to do a straight up and down edge, it's going to be the same issue that we we're talking about here. It's going to try to go and carve the pixels down at the very bottom edges of this thing. Uh, and so it's not going to end up being a straight up and down edge. It's going to cut into the top lip, the top edge of this, and it's going to widen out this entire rectangle. So one of the tools that we use to avoid this, and it's also a nice visual effect, is Feather. Feather is the tool that you use when you want to ramp up to a surface from the from a bottom edge. So we've got we set a depth of this and we know that this is at a quarter inch and we need to ramp up to back to the surface. So Feather does that. It ramps from the from the bottom up. And it's the same thing that you see uh, when you just put a pattern down on a plain board you'll see a feathered edge all around the entire thing. So this allows the bit to have a ramp. So there's no issues at all. It can ramp up there and then it's a nice beveled uh, finish to, to give us some visual interest as well. It finishes out the, the carving nicely. Now we can also do the same if we're worried about a, a pattern having too tight of an edge uh, too much of a what we call a cliff edge, a straight up and down edge. There's another tool called draft that you can add a beveled edge to the outside of an object where it will bevel from the top down to give that same kind of ramp quality to the outside of an object. Uh, most of the time, unless a pattern is particularly uh, tall and has a really flat edges all the way around it, draft is not usually necessary on a pattern but is definitely going to be necessary on text which we're going to cover next